Google Fit has leveled up as part of the March Pixel feature drop with some actually useful health tracking tools, including the ability to measure your heart rate and respiratory rate right from within the app. So we're going to go hands on to show you what exactly to expect. Thanks for watching 9to5Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be among the first to watch our upcoming videos. So being able to measure your heart rate on your smartphone is nothing new. It's a feature that has been possible with third party apps and even some health apps from other providers for a long time. Although it's even available via Bluetooth connected smart bands and smart watches. Respiratory rate is another notable addition to Google Fit. It's able to give you a fairly solid estimate of your breathing rate without needing any extra accessories or hardware. Obviously, it doesn't need to be said, but any heart rate or respiratory rate data obtained when using Google Fit cannot be declared 100% accurate, but it is a neat way to keep an eye on your vital statistics on a daily basis. Not needing to buy any extras is also another big bonus. So to explain, if you've been living under a rock for a few weeks or simply don't care enough to have done some pre-research, the latest Google Fit update announced alongside the March Pixel feature drop adds a few new things that mean that extra hardware is not necessarily a requirement to get some extra data. You don't therefore need something like a Fitbit or Smartband to get your heart rate data nor your respiratory rate. You can use the existing sensors on your Google Pixel to get a quick ballpark reading of your current health stats. For those wondering, respiratory rate in basic terms is your breathing rate or how many breaths per minute you take. It's a tough metric to measure in most cases, which makes inclusion within Google Fit one that might prove to be popular. Heart rate is pretty self-explanatory and it's just your current heartbeats per minute. So when you've managed to update the Google Fit app on your Pixel to version 2.51.19-130, you should get the option within your main feed to check your heart rate or track your respiratory rate. There are some advisory notices upon how certain pre-existing conditions, even things like dehydration and physical activity will affect the readings though. Checking your heart rate is as simple as placing your finger over the rear camera and waiting a few moments. Then you'll have a reading that can be saved directly to your Google Fit account so that you can check back on historical heart rate measurements and readings. The process is pretty simple with the on-screen guides correcting you if you place your finger in the wrong place. I found this a little bit easier on the Pixel 4a which does only have one lens to actively cover but you may see a couldn't get a stable reading message if you try to do so in a poorly lit environment. It'll take around 20 or 30 seconds to detect any light changes in your fingertip itself and sometimes it might need to use your LED flash if Fit does encounter a problem. Alternatively you can just activate the flash right away but we're not sure how this does actually affect overall accuracy of the results produced. Calculating your respiratory rate needs a little bit of extra work as you'll have to find a position to prop up your device pointing the front facing camera at your upper torso area so that the camera can actually monitor your chest movements when you're breathing. This movement is linked to how many breaths you're taking, so it's a simple way to get a good idea of your overall respiratory rate. I actually found that propping up on a vertical wireless charger was the best way to get my Pixel into the right position to get a respiratory rate reading every time, but you can just prop it up against a wall or ledge without too much of an issue. That said, the best thing about the new heart rate and respiratory rate features in Google Fit is that a data connection is actually not needed with all data captured directly on your device in real time. Nothing is sent to the cloud, nor is a network connection required for it to work. That means you can actually log results even when out and about, something like maybe going out for a hike or going out for a run, for instance, where you may have a spotty connection. So you're probably wondering just how accurate these readings are. Well, without true professional grade tools to properly track your heart or respiratory rate, it is worth noting that all of this data collected is simply advisory and can't really be called definitive. To be honest, the heart rate readings were often a little bit higher than my comparable readings from a Fitbit Sense, which I wear every day, and itself not the most accurate smartwatch on the market out there. Another notable is that realistically, these kind of readings can be directly affected simply by the act of taking or measuring them. Basically, by paying attention to your breathing and heart rate, the end result simply won't be as accurate as if taken or tracked throughout the day by a wearable when you're not monitoring the result in live or real time. We felt to need to mention this minor quirk as some people may see spikes and be slightly worried, but in many cases, it's just your body reacting to a visual stimulus. It is a good ballpark figure though to help you better understand your health 
and might be useful for managing your fitness goals as you can log each reading for long-term graphing within Google Fit. That said, have you managed to get these features on your device? Let us know down in the comment section below what you think of the new Google Fit options down there too. But this really was just a super quick look at what is new and how the features work. But as always, until next time, this is Damien with 95 Google saying thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.